so let's just go through the schedule. Um, you've already had a little mingle. We're now into what is post-production, <laughs> which is my presentation. And it's, um, you're welcome to ask questions at any time, of course. And we're a small group, so it's easy enough to manage. Um, at 11 o'clock, we'll have a break for half an hour where we can chomp and drink. Um, and then 11, it's a slight change from advertised schedule um, because we, had a, we did a post-production workshop a few weeks ago and we realised that it needed a few small tweaks. So we're going to do Premiere Pro uh, in the morning. And then at 12.30 there'll be a 45 minute lunch when we'll walk over to um, the, the, uh, the cafeteria. And then we'll have an introduction to WeVideo and hopefully we're going to try and keep it to half an hour but I put 45 minutes there in case it runs over a bit. Um, because we found that a lot of the things that you learn using Premiere Pro, you're going to be using in WeVideo. And um, we just felt it was a bit overkill trying to introduce both of them like fully. And you can't do it anyway in the day. So we thought we'd just you know, skim WeVideo a little bit because it is quite, both of them are quite self-evident when you get into them. But so um, hopefully that will, we'll have a quick coffee break then and then we'll go into the e e editing exercise and I know some of you might not be, have enough time to stay for the whole of that, but if you can, that'd be awesome. Um, you will have a chance to edit the stuff that you filmed last week or some, we have some editing footage prepared for you if you didn't. And then we get to watch your edited films. Woohoo! Now, of, of course there isn't much time, so we're not expecting like much at all um, and we'll be around to help you with anything. So, um, yeah, should get started then. So my presentation is, is what is post-production and really I'm just seeking to um, answer that question uh, because it's really the, the most overlooked um, aspect of making a video or making a film. Um, and I've been involved in, in media for 10, 15 years now and it was only a few years ago that I started to get interested in it. People are more interested in like going out and filming and all the sexy side of, um, of making videos. Um, but, but I've discovered that post-production is actually um, one, it's the most interesting part, part of it actually, I think. So um, I have concentrated on that for the past five years or so. Um, and I really love editing, so I do as much of that as I can. Um, and I'm also a producer, so I do the pre-bit and the end bit and usually leave the middle bit. But um, I need to do a bit more of the middle bit, actually. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And, yeah, so let's start by warming up our brains a bit, shall we? You know, I like brainstorming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love brainstorming because I don't have to do anything. What, um, what, what is post-production? What is post -production? Editing. Editing is, is part, part of, of post-production, yes. <laughs> watching Pride and Prejudice with my daughter last night and I noticed for the first time that as um, one of the characters come and was, was, was walking along, he had a stick and there was a gravel path, but you couldn't see the stick hitting the gravel path. But every time <laughs> he went like that, you could hear somebody with what sounded like a bag of beans going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's And that's post-production, <laughs> yeah. so it's like the sound is kind of looking at it and saying, what isn't there? that should be there. So yeah. sound is one of the very important parts. It is important and, and that, that obviously would have been added afterwards. It's called Foley. Um, would you oh, pronounce oh, it in a different way? No, yeah. I say, I, I, always, I, I used to call it Foley, but it's Foley, um, <laughs> where, they, where they create the sounds um, afterwards. Unless you've got a really great sound man who picks up all of those wonderful yeah. sounds, but you kind of need a whole crew of sound men to pick up all the different sounds <laughs> that you need to tell a story, you see? So that sound was like going crunch, crunch, crunch. To, to add a bit to, to the story. So sound, yep. Sound. Adding text. When we did our voiceover, we, we thought we were going to add text as well. Yeah, so you're it's adding elements, yeah. Captions, that's it, yeah, thanks. It's mm -hmm. an opportunity to review what you've got mm -hmm. and how you can actually improve what you've got in front of you and get rid of the stuff that really isn't necessary. So yes. it's almost like reviewing what you have in front of you. Yes, and that would be part of the editing process, I would say. Yep. Music is telling. Music, story. yeah. Music is added. This is all really part of the editing in many ways. Although I would say that adding foley isn't. That's part of the online online edit, which is uh, when you it's, add all the posh bits. It's actually, I suppose, in a way, you're looking at different um, recordings you've taken of the same thing, with mm -hmm. different aspects, and seeing which ones are most yeah. interesting to the viewer. Yeah. yeah. Is it telling the story? Because uh, I think. Um, 
some I can't remember who it was now said that you know the director gets a whole load of film yes and then the editor actually makes yeah makes well sense. footage but it's the editor who then makes the film yes who tells the story yes that's why I like editing yeah basically the edit that's where the ultimate storytelling is mm. it's in the edits yeah. um, so you've got a script and they think they're the storytellers and they are you've got the director he thinks he's the storyteller or she um, and she is to some degree and then you've got the editor who's got the final say <laughs> So it's all um, it's all final cut and final say. <laughs> <laughs> well, argues with the director, yeah. unless you're the same one on the same thing, which is probably what most of you will be. Um, yes. So we got all of these things are in the edit: storytelling, picking your bits, selecting, reviewing. What else would you do apart from editing? This is not really editing. It's kind of post post production. <laughs> You've got to um, look after all your elements. So some, one part of post-production is actually gathering all your footage and putting it in a safe place. And if you need to process it, it's processing it. So that's actually, you've got people in, in media who actually their, own, their whole job is doing that. So it's looking after, um, looking after your footage and all the other elements. You've also got people who work, uh, producers who work in, po in post-production trying to gather resources. Like if, you've, um, if you need music, you need to find it somewhere, probably, or get it composed. And then you need to talk about the rights and all those, those kind of things. These are things actually that you will have to be concerned about if you're going to use music. So you've got all the gathering of elements. That's an important part of post-production. And the looking after all of those things. Uh, and copyright comes into it a bit <laughs> and then for the sake of argument I'm going to include distribution in post-production so once you've edited your film and you've polished it and you've added sound effects <laughs> if you want to that would be awesome if any of you wanted to add some you could add sound effects to yours yes. um, um, added sound effects and music and titles and maybe <laughs> colour corrected your video if, if the colour's wrong or a lot of the videos that we shot the other day were really dark because it was dark <laughs> and the JBC doesn't handle low light very well. Um, you might want to try and deal with that in post-production if you, if you get that far. Um, and then when you've put it all together, you want to export the video and distribute it. So that's a really important part of, of it all. Um. <coughs> So well, I wonder if I can work, make this work. But um, you, you talked about editing, so I think a lot of you do have a good idea about what editing is. It's reviewing what you've um, got and selecting bits, putting bits together, right? It's a, it's a process of selection. So you've got maybe a 10 hours of footage and you want to make half an hour film or 10 minute film or even three minute film. How do you do that? It's magic. It really is. <laughs> it's um, a very involved process of, of selecting and choosing and making choices, and that's what editing is. Um, what, though? See if I can do this. What makes a good edit? Seamless. Very good. What one you don't notice? Absolutely. Invisible. You can't notice. It is the invisible art. That's why people don't pay much attention to it. Um, well, maybe more so now, but it is. Or if it's done badly. <laughs> yeah. If it's done badly, it's like, woohoo! Well, I'll show you some in a minute. You'll see some bad <laughs> editing, and, I'll, and you can pick out what's bad about it. So, seamless, invisible. Yeah, how is it seamless? How does it become invisible? It's the logical flow for the story, isn't it? So that it's you're, story. if you've got a dialogue going on, you assume that the next edit is going to be either looking at the face of the other person, so then they're saying you want to look at their feet or the skyline or something like that. Yeah, so if you're having two people talking, one person, one person, one person, one person. And that would kind of seem to make sense, wouldn't it? But, yeah. yeah. Yes, there is, there is um, a logic in terms of meaning and content, but there's also a logic in terms of what shot goes next to each other. It's a continuity, because aren't there people that are when you see the credits, they come up and they have continuity and they have their names by the side of it. Yep. Continuity is part of making it invisible and seamless. 
Um, not something we'll necessarily come across making an educational video, um, but it is something to uh, bear in mind, you know. I suppose, I mean, if you're talking about the logic, of, there's also an emotion aspect to it, because you don't want to use a clip that, uh, where yeah. everything looks very laid back if you're trying to create a dramatic moment. Or yes, and um, uh, that, well that really, uh, come, that really um, is about making things appropriate. Yes. So if you're making a video about how to use a library, you, you know, will come dressed appropriately so that it doesn't go whoop and jar. Um, of course, you could make a silly one, so that would be fun. Yes, in the style of. In the style of something or other. <laughs> I've seen a few of those, yeah. Um, I suppose it's knowing your subject and understanding what you're dealing with so you get things right. If you know nothing yeah. about it, uh, it'll come across in your film if you don't understand what you're doing and how you're portraying it. So that's, yeah, that's why you should be doing research before you go and make your film, right? It's a bit like a dissertation. If you approach it like a dissertation, yeah. beginning, middle and end, mm. and then the focus... And do you want continuity within a dissertation? It's, in my head, it's a similar kind of thing. It is, yes. So all of us have been taught how to think, and you need to apply that to making a, a video and put equal amount of effort as you would put to a dissertation into making um, a video, especially if it's a, a documentary. Look, I'm going to show you some things, and I want you to make some comments about these um, films, if it works. Sound OK? North Carolina was one of the original 13 colonies established by the British. In the 1700s, the colony continued growing as settlers immigrating from the colonies of Pennsylvania and Virginia joined new colonists from Europe in order to forge their existence in the wide open spaces of the Carolinas. These settlers of this brave new world are familiar with unfair taxation practices. Corruption hardly extinct today. Uh, I think basically a lot of these public officials in the back country realized that they weren't being watched and when people know they're not being watched, they will line their pockets. A lot of the public officials were poorly supervised. The courthouse rings formed up. And uh, this is sort of what got the regulators riled up. In the colony of North Carolina, before and during William Tryon's governorship, there is a noticeable rise of corruption in the it? administration. <laughs> Many lawyers who are beholden to the new governor seem to operate with a wink and a nod from his office. Any comments on that? Narration was very fast. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 And it, it's like the narrator, it like you had one voice and he went to a different... Yeah, the, and the, the speaker came on. Yeah. yeah. There's but lots of things that jar in that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Jarring yeah. is a good word yeah. for that. What was annoying was it, it gives you quick flashes of things. Yes. So while your brain's focusing on that yeah. shit and trying to look at that, it's moved to the map. Yeah. Then you yeah. get to the map. Where are you on the the, cut, map? the yeah. cuts are too short. Sh yeah. Uh, yeah. Too short. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, short cuts. Um, but who mentioned the titles? I thought the, bl the bloke that was interviewed, I thought he should have personally subtitles or... No, you mean the, the uh, title yeah, yeah, information, yeah. saying who he was and... Yeah. yeah. And you had the weird music thing, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Was, the music, yeah. was yeah. the music inappropriate? Yeah, it was like it something it? Big oh, Doom okay. was coming from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. This isn't Lord of the Rings. <laughs> It was slightly inappropriate, I must say. It, it wasn't. I was listening to the music and trying to match the words and and not getting it. A lot of it, I wasn't getting. It was um, just a distraction. That the the actual writing or the text on the screen was a distraction, and so was the music. It just didn't add anything to it. Yeah. Um, there were also a lot of cuts which were fade cuts, um, which is basically. Please don't do it. It looks dreadful. It's um. It's a sign of not being able to edit properly. First, get be first try and learn how to cut cleanly, and then if you want to do it for artistic reasons, if there's a good reason to do it, then do the fade cuts between shots. Um, they also had a lot of overlays, so there was something going on in the background with someone, something else going on in the foreground, um, which was just distracting and irrelevant. The, the the stuff they were showing in the background was completely irrelevant, as far as I could see. There was nothing to set it up either. It was all of a yeah. sudden they were talking about corruption. There was yeah. a picture of a vote, and then yeah. so nothing the 13 colonies, and then corruption. Mm. Yeah. Why? <laughs> it was random. So that was a really random video, and lots of, like, like quite... I mean, if you just watched it, you'd probably just watch it, but you're looking out for mistakes. So, yeah, this one <laughs> is even worse. <laughs> Oh, 
I can't believe this one. Go, go, go. Oh, dear. Is this how physicists see themselves? That is totally appropriate. Yeah. Oh, my God. What is that, guys? You're like trained in spot. Look at the Here it comes again. <laughs> It just goes on and on and on. I'm sorry, that's it. <laughs> but if you were a train spotter, you'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. It goes space too quick. While. I've never been able to play that long enough to actually get, <laughs> get, get to the bit at the end where the professor starts talking, right? Oh, really? Yeah. There's someone at the end that starts oh, talking. <laughs> okay, what? Oh, bless. They I know. Oh, they tried. Yeah, yeah they tried really, really hard. <laughs> Trying to keep the students hard. awake. Yeah. That's the idea. Keep the students awake. Yeah. Mm. Any comments on her? Oh, I think we covered that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was one important thing that I wanted you to notice about that, apart from the terrible music and the terrible everything, how long every single yeah. shot was. And yeah. Yeah. There was so some action. Yeah, it was out of sight. Yeah, it was on the track. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So mum cuts are not necessarily good. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've no. Drop cuts are bad. This goes at 115 miles an hour and it's coming slow. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. complete opposite to what they're trying to get over. Did anyone notice anything about the train's direction? Yes, it swapped at one point. Didn't it? Yes, it did. It was coming this way and all of a sudden it went that way. Oh. And a lorry vanished in the background. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, <laughs> was it going the wrong way? No, that's no, the lorry was going the right way. Well, I, I don't know. It, it was going that way and then it just vanished. <laughs> did it just vanish? Yeah, it just <laughs> vanished. <laughs> continuity <laughs> error. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I know about you, Thomas. You like watching out for yeah. continuity <laughs> errors. Um, so the direction thing, if, do you remember I talked about the 180 degree rule? Yeah. Um, basically, the train was coming from one way and then it was going the other way. Mm. So basically, it got its direction. It got its 2D space completely messed up. Mm. Um, there was so much that was wrong with that, but it's quite amusing. Anyway, so we don't want to watch it again. Um, <laughs> we've covered a lot of this, but I just wanted to go over it quickly. I'm going to talk mainly about practical things you should do um, while you're editing or before you're editing. But here's a bit about the art of editing. I like the art of editing but we decided that I couldn't talk much about it. So. Um, be invisible. <laughs> be invisible is the main thing. I, I really got into it, but here I've condensed it into one side. Um, uh, yeah, be invisible. We've already said that. You want to do everything you can to not be noticed. Um, story comes first. You all know that. You remember my lovely slide, story is supreme. Um, kill your baby. Has ever, anyone ever heard that phrase? Yeah. Kill your baby. Oh, maybe it's just me. Yeah, not other than it yeah. sounds, sounds like yeah. similar to what we do in architecture, which is don't be so precious about your yeah. design ideals. So you get an idea, and you, oh yeah, that's really great, yeah. but be flexible. So Absolutely, just yeah. Just go throw it out if you need to. You have to throw the baby out um, if, if it's like, oh, that gorgeous f a shot of the sunset that I spent all day getting. Come tell the story, get it out, stop, stop being so precious. That's what kill your baby means. It also means... If you're a filmmaker and your film is three hours long, don't do it. Kill your baby, no one wants to watch it, make half an hour. Um, so, you've got a script, know your script, you should know your script as the editor. Um, that means knowing your purpose, the purpose of your video, but don't be bound by it. You need to be led by the content as well. So if you haven't got the content to make the script, what are you going to do? Um, make it flow. So that's something about being invisible. You need it to, to flow. Nothing must jar the ear, the eye or the ear. So when it comes to audio, um, basically the idea is to have one long flow of audio. So you can notice the cuts in the, in the picture, but you can't notice the cuts in the audio. You need to find a way to, to smooth that over, to bring new sounds in gently. Um, that's the way it doesn't jar the ear. Um, not jarring the eye is about 180 degree rule, uh, it's about cutting on the action, making sure you get it just right so it doesn't look like you've jumped. Um, don't do jump cuts. Jump cuts is a, is, had it in that first video. They tried to smooth over the jump cuts. If you've got an interview and you want to cut out the middle bit, uh, then you want to put the two ends together because you don't want the middle bit, it's, it's too wordy. If you put them together without covering it with another picture, you've got a jump cut. Uh, so that's why you need to shoot B-roll 
and shoot other things to cover up any kind of jump cut you might have in an interview. So avoid those. They look dreadful. So, so, so what constitutes a jump cut? Where it, it, it's where there's a sudden change from one to the other? It's, it's a sudden change in the same shot yeah. or a shot that is very similar. So if you've got one interview right. and he's just sitting there or she's just sitting there going blah, 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 and you cut out a bit um, and then you stick it back together again, so there's blah, 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 blah. So that is where the jump becomes and you'll never see it on so television. So the key thing is the same subject because, you know, there's lots of cuts where, you know, it's like a sharp cut, something stops and then something begins. Yeah. But it's That's only when it's the same subject yes. that and it becomes annoying. Uh, you, yes, when you, had, you go, okay. If you had somebody that was... Um, talking for say like 20 minutes you only would like two minutes of the conversation yeah right how are you going to take those relevant elements without making them do <coughs> the time warp um well you have a lot of other footage to cover it up with oh okay that's yeah, the so only thing you can do so, so i suppose you go to the interviewer Say. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I suppose you. And then you, back. Just nodding. The, just going. The other way. The, that is. That's called the noddy. Um, <laughs> no, actually, the noddy is the other way round. When the interviewer goes, hmm. hmm. Um, you you can do it with two cameras. If you're shooting, what if you don't want to shoot any other kind of footage to cover up and tell the story another way? You have two cameras and you cut between the two. But they have to be different shots. They can't be. You have. Uh, there's a thirty degree rule as well as a hundred and eighty degree rule. Has anyone heard the 30 degree yeah. rule? No. I, 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 haven't, I, may, yeah. I did talk about it, I think, in Breaking the Barriers. I think I did a little bit. Basically, 30 degrees between each shot. So if you're shooting, I'm shooting Pete here, and then I move a little bit this way, that's too similar a shot. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so what I would probably do is shoot a wide of Pete and then do a close-up of Pete. That's enough of a difference for your eye not to go, ooh, like that. You see what I mean? So... Um, mm -hmm. So that's one way of, of, of doing that. So is it a bit like a quilt? When you put a quilt together, you've got all these bits there and yeah. you have to play around to match them to see which is the best yes. fit, really. I would say that's what editing is like, yes. <laughs> Just for you, Trish. Um, <laughs> it is like making quilts, very much so. Um, so keep their attention with engaging content, not flashy editing. So I would say that you do need to let your uh, story breathe don't try, this is something that happens to editors when they're just starting out and they think they know what to, they're doing. They go, bah, 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 like that. And they try and make it look really flashy and, and cool, whereas actually what they really wanted to do is tell the story with nice, using their lovely footage that they had. So just let your story breathe, um, cut at the right time. And the only way you know the right time is by intuition, is by watching, ah, that's the right time. There have been some theories about when you have to cut, when the right time to cut is. One of the main, most famous theories is uh, cut when you blink. Um, um, but really, it's just intuition. You'll know. Because you'll watch it back and you'll say, that's wrong, I need it a little bit different. So, um, keep your titles clean and simple. Um, really, you want everything to be as simple as possible. Um, clean and simple, I mean... In that first video, they had these titles with these awful shadows on them that were about a metre away from, the, from the, um, the text itself. It just looked really crass. Just make it white, aerial, you know, simple as possible. Don't make it bright green. <laughs> this is an aesthetic tip. You don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. Um, avoid transitions between shots or something. Another aesthetic tip. One, maybe one of my bugbears, but... Um, if you can't make it cut, if you can't make it cut cleanly with just just a cut, then there's something wrong with that edit, and you need to change it. Don't put a transition on it because it just shows that you've got it wrong. Um, and avoid still images if you possibly can, because this is the movies. We want to have things that move. We want footage. Um, we don't want a still image. And if you need to use it because it's part of the story, and hopefully all of you have watched that uh, video that I sent. Um, then you should add movement to it. So who did watch that video that I sent? Yeah. Did you, do you think, what did you learn from it? Not a lot. Not a lot? Oh, I, I thought it, well, I, the thing that struck me was um, there's quite a lot of close-up mm -hmm. on, uh, uh, other than the long aisles. You know, there was a few, few long aisles, but the, 
shallow depth of field, so there was a lot of stuff was out of focus when, especially when you, you know, with the art and the artwork. Um, um, and I like the music to begin with. It sort of had that, you know, Wild West maverick mm. type yeah. feel to it. I, I thought, it, I thought it was a really good film. Different views of the trolleys as well. Yeah. Which mm. I thought was sort of, yeah. I, I thought it was too much trolley. I, I mean, I think there was too much extraneous <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> Can I quote you? Paul says there's too much trolley. Yeah. Too much trolley. Yeah. 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 I know it was interesting what I was saying, but it could have been half the length. Yeah, but it was. Right. Ended in black and white, but it's very colourful, and then the last. Yeah. Ended in black and white, which is quite good. Mm. Yeah, there's a yeah. it's too long. There. there were problems with it. Yeah, it didn't flow particularly well. Some of the cuts were really relevant, um, so so it was kind of like out of place. It's like, yeah, we know he's an artist, and yeah, the, yeah. You know, there, there, there were some yeah. there were some yeah. things that were just not quite right. It was okay. the actual content of the of the film was. Was all right, you know. You could watch it and go, "Yeah, okay, I get what you're talking about," but mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't seamless by any stretch of the no. imagination. Yeah. Do you think it was not seamless because you were watching for the edit points? No, no, no. Because yeah. I, when I first watched it, I didn't pay any attention to what you written. It's only the second time I watched that. Yeah. So, right. so I watched this. I went, "Oh, I'll click on that," because like you do, <laughs> hyperlink, click. And What's this random thing? It's, yeah, a well, bit, it's a I, random... I really liked it. I, no, I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was, it was, bad. Bad. I thought it was interesting what he was yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The and bit the that really got me was when they chucked in the bits with his, uh, him and the celebrity photos. Not uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on a minute. That's yeah. when I switched off. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. So, yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's, it's not... Uh, it was slightly a random selection, but it did include a lot of things that were interesting in terms of learning how to edit. Mm. So it had an in, it had a voiceover or an interview. It had <coughs> um, wides and close ups, and um, it had pictures that moved because it was part of the story. It was just um, uh, some points that I hope that mm. if you watched it and noticed where the cuts were and what what came first and what came next, that you might be able to think a bit more about editing. But I'm glad that some of you watched it. Mm. Um, <coughs> and yeah. That's all I'm allowed to say about art. Um, <laughs> <laughs> know your place. <laughs> um, so let's just, you know, uh, talk about the keys to success. Um, don't be lazy. It takes a lot of effort to make a video. I said that last time, didn't I? Um, it is true. It takes a lot of effort. You have to put the effort in. You have to put the time in. It's just what happens, you know. Everyone says after my workshop, oh, and there's not enough time. It's true. There isn't enough time to do... Uh, anything significant in terms of making your own video in a workshop like this takes a few days. Um, be organised. Now, um, organisation is, is the key to post-production. You want to be nicely organised, everything in, in its proper place, and I'll show you a few things how to do that. Um, otherwise, you get lost, especially if you've got a lot of footage. You know, sometimes I've had to deal with 100 hours of footage. How do you deal with that? Um, focus on the details. It is about the details. It's about that specific one cut. Does it work? It's about that title. Is it in the centre? Is the size right? Tiny details make uh, the bigger picture, but you do need to see the big picture as well. You need to see the whole story. So an editor always watches everything over and over again, and that's the one cut they've just made, the sequence they've just made, and the whole video they've just made to see if it's right. Um, and keep it simple. Always a good tip when it comes to things like this. Okay. <clears throat> in, your, um, in your packs, you've got a little printout. Step-by-step, um, -step, uh, kind of a checklist guide to post-production. It's just basically me throwing in everything I can think of that you might have to do <laughs> um, if you make a video in, in terms of post-production, in, in as much order as it possibly can be. It might be useful to remind you, um, if you're going through this process yourself, kind of things that you might have to do. You don't have to do it all, but um, it's, uh, you know, it might remind you about some things. So I'm going to just talk about a few things um, that you have to do um, in the post-production process, step by step. Um, <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is get organised, as I said. Now, when you get to your computers, you will find this folder. It's not very high resolution, is it? You'll find this folder. Um, on your computers. Now this is just an example of a project folder that you might find uh, useful to use um, when you uh, get to making a video. And I do advise you put everything together so that it's all neat, nice and tidy. Um, obviously there's the footage folder there 
And inside the footage folder, um, if you're shooting more than one batch of footage, <clears throat> I, would, um, I would date your folders. So what I do is I have a footage folder and inside the footage folder I have lots of other folders with footage from different batches of footage. Um, so the first one will be labelled um, 2014-07-12 uh, veg box, something like that. So that will be the footage that I took on that particular date and the contents is uh, it's about a veg box and I put everything in there. Um, and what we advised you to do last time, I think, and this time again, is to grab all the contents of your, um, on your camera, on your camera's SD card, grab it all, all the folders, and copy it all into the folder you've made uh, with the date and the contents, the named folder that you've made in your footage folder. So you grab it all, so that will be maybe one folder or three folders, depending on what you're using, and don't try and go into the folders and find the video files and don't try and use some kind of uh, software uh, to help you find the clips. The best thing to do is to grab all the files off your, file, off your SD card, dump it into your folder. Um, and then obviously that will copy over and takes a bit of time. Um, then you've got other elements folder and the other elements is for things like your music or maybe some photos you want to use, or maybe a logo that you want to use, um, which you probably will end up using if you're doing anything for your university. Um, outputs, that's for your edited film. So sometimes you'll, you'll edit something and you'll have a rough cut and you'll want to show people. So you'll export something and you'll put it in there. And then when you've finished your video, you'll put it in there as well. Um, Premiere, it's a Premiere folder. If you're using Premiere, Premiere needs its own, for own folder. And in that folder, you'll keep the project file, um, which is a file in itself. And when you open Premiere, it kind of generates a lot of other files, uh, like preview files and autosave files, and it needs somewhere to keep them. And if you put them all in one folder, then it's nice and neat. Then you've got your production documents folder, <clears throat> which is um, where you're going to keep things like your script. Um, and if you had a budget, you might keep it in there. Any planning? Uh, anything like that. Um, interview questions, your shot list, remember we should write a shot list. Uh, risk assessment, things like that. Um, so that's getting organised with a project folder. Um, <clears throat> taking care of your footage, so of, I just mentioned a few things about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, make a new folder for each batch of footage, name and date your folder. Now the reason I, uh, I date things like this is because I spend a long time in China and they always put the year at the beginning, but it's also because um, if you do it like that, then it, it lists um, chronologically on your computer. It's just an easier way to find things, I think. So you put the year at the front um, and you copy the camera's entire folder structure. Um, when you're copying over, obviously it takes a, a bit of time. When it's done, you have to make sure it's all copied over successfully. Um, one, the first, way, well, first thing you do is check the size of each folder. Second thing you do is play one of the video files in the copied folder. And it's just, it sounds like common sense, but there's so many people who don't do it. And if you don't do it and it, something's gone wrong with the copying, then you don't have your footage. Um, I always check everything, she says. Um, back it up onto a separate external hard drive. It takes a lot of effort to get your footage um, and computers do fail you might lose all your footage. Um, if you're doing a lot of filming and you have a library building up, which some of you might uh, have happen, I would say that all of that library should go into an external hard drive as a backup. Um, it's just a safety procedure. Then when you've got it all copied up and you're happy that you've got it safe, it's expensive to get, you'll never be able to get it again. Um, you can delete the footage from your camera and every time you copy a batch of footage over, delete the footage from the SD card in your camera so that you, you're starting out clean again. Otherwise, you'll be copying the footage again <laughs> next time you come back to your computer. So we always uh, say that the best way to do it is to format your memory card in the, com in the camera. You just pre press, uh, put it in and find the format button and it just everything goes. Um, <clears throat> so that's a bit about taking care of your footage. I wanted to introduce you to... Um, the layout of an editing um, program, an editing software. 
Um, basically, most editing softwares follow the same principles. It's all going to be laid out in pretty much a similar way. We video is pretty much the same as this. It lacks one of these windows, but the same concepts uh, do apply. So, um, first things first, what have we got first? This is your project window. These are all windows, see? There are bits and windows and they all kind of come apart. Uh, this is your project window, it's where you keep all your stuff. That's where you're going to import your footage into this section and you're going to store it all in there. And being organised in here is also very important and I'll give you some recommended folder structures in there. So you import it, you put it all in there um, and then if you open up um, a, a footage, a piece, a clip in here, you can view it on here. So that's your source monitor. You can view here and you can do some edits in there as well. Uh, find the in, in point and the out point. And then what you do is you drag it onto here, which is your timeline or your sequence. Um, so, is everyone familiar with how a timeline works? Not really. Um, a timeline is time-based, obviously. Like film, it's time-based. It's got a beginning and an end. Um, so this is the beginning, and that's the end. And this is your, um, what do you call that? Playhead. Playhead. This is where you're um, viewing at the moment. So as you press play, it will go all the way to the end. Um, these are the clips on the timeline, and they're relative in length. So this is a long one, and that's a short one. You can change how long they look on this timeline by zooming in and zooming out, but the relative length of them is not going to change. Um, a timeline works on two levels. This is the top level, that's the bottom level. On the top level, you've got your pictures, your footage, and on the bottom level, you've got your sound. And they work in slightly different ways. On the top, you've got your pictures. That's one picture down there. Um, and that on, uh, above it is the title. Now, the title has an invisible background, and I can only see the words. So that's why I can see the words and the picture together. But if I put, put my playhead here, I'd only be, be able to see this clip, I wouldn't be able to see that one, okay? So the ones that are above cover the ones below, but on the, when it comes to sound, it all mixes together. So that's what they mean when they say a sound mix. You're basically making sure that all the, all the different levels of sound that you have, all the different clips, mix together properly. Um, so that's how a timeline works, and Matt will show you how to operate it <laughs> when we get to the premiere. Um, training and the Wii video training. He'll show you how to zoom in and zoom out and he'll show you how to put the clips onto the timeline, things like that. And this here is your program monitor. Basically it's showing what's on your timeline. So this is where you'll view that video. Okay, so that's the workings, the basic workings of an ed editing software. Obviously you've got lots of other things. This is where you're going to hear your sound, <coughs> your tools, stuff like that. But in that, in that regard, most editing software are different. But in the basic way it works, that's how it works. Any questions about that? No? Uh, I didn't say, but you can ask, obviously, questions as you, as you want. What if you've done something you think that was a big mistake? Mm. <laughs> go back. In, in life or in editing? In life, in life. <laughs> you can't go back in life. Um, no, unfortunately, no. editing is wonderful because it's non-destructive, whereas life is destructive. <laughs> so um, whatever you do, in your editing, because this is all computer based. If you had a, f a strip of film and you cut it, that's a strip of film cut. Whereas here, if you cut it, what's beyond still exists. So everything still exists, you're just hiding it. And does Premiere, uh, uh, I sort of kind of know Final Cut a little bit. Yeah. And uh, when you're using Final Cut, if you're importing stuff into the software, it makes a copy of it. It's not a copy, it's a link, really. No, no, I, I actually mean a copy. Mm. In Final Cut, it, 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 when you import, you can choose whether to use original or make copies. Oh, okay. So yeah. Final Cut gets huge folders yeah. because so, you're working on copies. And it, it was just to reassure that, you know, you need to be aware of whether you're... Which version of Final Cut is it? Ten. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. So, so, so what you're doing oh, is, is Final Cut is helping you make a file that it can work with. Yes. So in the old days, I'm a Final Cut editor. Um, and any footage I got, Final would not recognise, and I'd have to process all that footage right. before I brought it in. 
Um, so I had the raw footage and I have to make a ProRes file for Final Cut to edit with and I just keep it in ProRes and that's just one of the things that Final Cut does. Um, whereas if you're using Premiere, it's you know, got the codecs, it can, it can read the files so it doesn't have to generate these extra... But is um, Premiere working on... Because in, in, in Final Cut, if, you, if you're viewing on the left-hand side and editing, you, 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 know, you, you do an end and uh, you know, start an end point and then when you drag that on, mm. you, you still haven't cut that bit that's there. Yeah. You've just made like a, a copy of it that you then put on. On does the timeline. Does Premiere work in the same way? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you, if you put an in point there and an out point there, yeah. what you'd bring onto the timeline is the middle bit. Yeah. Yeah, but the original is still untouched. So you could, yeah. Un Non-destructive, yeah. yeah. Okay, a little bit of organization. Um, folder structures inside your editing software. Um, Matt told me to simplify these, so I did. I make really complicated folders, but these are the base. This is basically what you need to do to to organise in Premiere. Have a folder for your footage, um, so it's not all over the place. And if you want to separate your shots into um, subject matters within that folder, you can do that. These folders are called bins in Premiere. They're not called folders. Don't know why. Something to do with the ancient art of editing. Yeah, I used to store films in bins. <laughs> um, this is your other elements, so your music, um, your pictures, and also if you're making a title in Premiere, it makes a file within the editing software, so you can stick it in there. And these are your sequences, so each timeline that I showed you can be saved um, as, as a sequence, so it becomes, it's a kind of a little an icon in your um, in your project in your project window, and you can copy those and make new ones. And I would recommend that you do do that as you go along, so that you can work, save your work in pro in in steps. So you've got a rough, you've got all your footage together, and you view it on the timeline if you want, and then you cut the bits that you think are good, and then you make a new sequence, and then you keep cutting, make a new sequence, keep cutting. So it's um, it's a really good way of of progressing I think anyway so that's for Premiere a way of sorting yourself out and in WeVideo you can make folders too slightly more involved <coughs> but um, you can and they don't have uh, in WeVideo they don't have the same way of copying sequences <coughs> making sequences so you don't have that option you have a different way of doing it it's quite complicated Matt will explain um, so footage and other elements in, um, in WeVideo as well now here is something important for you guys to know. <coughs> Doing me. Um, you need to know some, like, like every artist, an editor is an artist, but they also, also have to be a technician. They have to be quite techy when it comes to computers. But you don't have to be that techy, but you do have to know some really basic things. Um, the first thing is, now aspect ratio and frame size are connected. They're the same things. If you divided these, you'd get these numbers. <laughs> Um, 16 by 9 is the standard ratio, aspect ratio that you'll see these days. It's long on the top, short on the side. Okay, it's a normal aspect ratio that you'll see. And the frame size for HD, for high definition, and you're not going to be working on anything else these days, I don't think, unless you're going into 4K, but we're not. <laughs> um, it's 1920 by 1080. And that basically means. There are 1,920 pixels going this way. And the pixels are the little dots that make up your digital picture. They're square pop dots. <laughs> and then there are 1,080 going up that way. And this is a 16 by 9 screen, isn't it? <coughs> yeah, so this is actually what 1920 and 1080 is going to look like um, in terms of its shape. If you don't, if you get this wrong, at the beginning of your editing or at the end of your editing, you're gonna, get, gonna end up with something weird like that. <laughs> so, first of all, it's distorted. You can see he's way too thin. What this guy has done is he's shot something in 16 by 9 and he's tried to put it into a 4 by 3 square, which is the old aspect ratio for television in the old days. <laughs> can you remember that, Thomas? I can, honestly. <laughs> I genuinely can. We didn't have digital TV for quite a long time. So well, that, that's what it was. Screen. 
And as you can see, this is a YouTube, um, this is a YouTube screen. YouTube screen is, is 16 by 9 now. And he's basically put it in the <coughs> middle and there's black bits around the edges. One of my aesthetic tips is avoid black bits. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you've got a still image, if you've got a still image that doesn't fit, find some way to make it fit um, if you can. If not, if, if it's aesthetically pleasing to have you know, your uh, portrait in the middle there with a black around, then that's fine. Um, but please don't do that. You could always put a different background on it, couldn't you? Rather than black, you could just maybe put it on some kind of textured... Yes, you can. There's an advert out at the moment by Lloyd's, and they do it quite nicely. Um, they use a lot of old photos um, to tell a story, and they put it on textured backgrounds. Look out for it, it's quite nice. I don't know where I saw it. Um, yeah, I think saw it the other day. Video will, will adjust them because I was using some photographs in Wii video. In Wii video. Do they? And it's, yeah. Yes, we've got some, in, in our editing footage, we've got some footage that's different size. So we've got some that's full HD and some that's slightly smaller. And in Wii video, it automatically will resize it, but it won't do it in Premiere. Mm. Um, so back to the basic technical things you should know. This is uh, the frame rate that we're working in, usually in HD. 25p. Now, 25 means um, 25 frames per second. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that most of you know that film works in 24 frames per second, and that means that there's 24 little photos every second playing in a film, whereas video works in these days in 25 frames per second in this country. If you would go to America or, to, or Japan, slightly different, and that's why you've got other choices in your editing software. So just ignore the other choices because your footage is going to be 25. Okay? It's also going to be P. Now the P stands for progressive. We don't know why it's called progressive. It doesn't matter why it's called progressive. But basically that means it's a full frame. Whereas in the old days it was I, which is interlaced, and that was kind of two frames together that they slotted together to make one picture. And it's just to do with the speed of data transfer. Thanks, Russ. <laughs> now, when you're editing, um, when you're editing and when you're recording your sound, um, you, um, when it comes to sound, um, sound is really important to, to get right. It really is. If you don't get it right, you're, you're ruining a whole video. So the, f the most basic thing you need to get right is it mustn't clip. And when sound clips, it's going into the red. If, you, if you've ever done any editing, it's going into the red and going, boom, 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 like that. Um, I wonder if I've got, I've got a, little, um, a little track to let you listen to to <coughs> show what clipped sound sounds like. Sound that is, it basically becomes distorted because it's too loud, it's going beyond the pale and it can't manage that sound. Um, zero dB is the limit and if you go beyond that, you're losing your sound, okay? So it's really obvious when you're editing because it goes into the red. Don't want it there, you want it a little bit lower than that. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see if I can play it. A normal office environment. Very little to do with a muddy Welsh field, you might think. Okay, that is distorted sound. Really distorted. Matt put it together for me. <laughs> um, if you looked at it, you know that sound has waves like that, and those are the waves that you're going to see on your editing program. Even in Wii Video, you can see those. If it's going like this, that's, that's when it clips. That's a big, big no-no. Okay. And two channels of sound. Um, that basically means it's not stereo. It's basically a mono, but for two ears. So when you're recording, uh, you'll be recording... It, if you're recording with one microphone, you're going to have it onto two channels of sound normally. And those should be the same. Um, in both ears. So I don't want to hear something that's... If you're, you, you, if you're listening through mic, um, headphones, you, you, can, you can tell if it's right or not. So always listen through headphones. And if it's only sound in one ear, then it's wrong. If it's different in both ears, if it sounds good, then you've done a, an amazing stereo job. Um, but it should be sounding the, best, uh, the same in, in, both, in both ears, okay? Um, basic technical things you should be aiming for. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 
No, you don't want to hear that again. <coughs> <coughs> so here's some of the steps. Um, editing, this is what you do at the start. You watch all your footage and you log it. Um, in the beginning, when I started editing, I used to write everything down, all my shots, everything. It used to take ages. I don't do that anymore because I can't be bothered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what logging means. There are some poor souls who have to do that for their job. Um, you need to know your footage to be able to edit it. You really need to know it. Um, then you start structuring your story by editing down the voiceover and the interviews. That's how I do it. You don't have to do it like that. If you're a really visual person, you don't necessarily have to do it like that. But I think that in terms of educational media, that's the most useful way to do it. So if you have an interview, if that's what you're, shoot if that's what you're um, working with, um, cut, cut it down to the bits that you want. Um, I was talking about creating new sequences to save your work in stages. Uh, that's what you do as you go through the edit. I think that's a good way of working. You don't have to do that, but it means you can go back if, you, if you, you're trying something new out and then, oh, it doesn't work, I'm going to go back to the, the cut I had before. Hello. So, so by that you mean uh, you know, you've got your footage and you might bring in, you, you might do a little bit of a mm -hmm. clipping, uh, editing. Yeah. Uh, so you're creating a sequence, you know it's too long and it's got too much. So it's like a stepwise refinement. It is a is stepwise that? refinement, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you can try new things as well without mm. destroying an edit mm. that you've done previously. Yeah. yeah. Um, once you've edited the narrative, uh, start building the visual story. So you start adding the pictures on the top. If you've got lots of pictures, which I would hope, lots of footage, I hope you would have B-roll, right, to cover any interview that you took, for instance. And don't forget to save your project regularly. <laughs> Premiere, um, we video saves it because it's all online, so that's not a problem. But Premiere will save every half an hour for you. But what if you've done an amazing amount of work in that half an hour and suddenly your computer crashes? <laughs> save, save, save. Okay, in the middle, what do you do? You keep building. It's a bit like adding bits and bits and bits. It's like making a quilt. You keep building, you make it flow. Make sure that you aren't having, having anything jar. If you're doing a rough edit, I usually try and make it flow right at the beginning, but that's just me. Um, a, a more efficient way of working is to have a rough edit where it's just like the content that you want, and then you start making it, making it flow. Um, ask for pickups to fill gaps. Pickups, does anyone know what a pickup is? I've got lots of these terms I do. No one knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> a pickup is basically when you've done um, the majority of your filming, you've done all your filming and you're doing the edit and you're thinking it would be so amazing to have one shot just here. There's nothing else in the footage that's going to work. So you go back to your camera, cameraman and you say, can you just get me another shot of, of a hen laying an egg or something like that? Um, and that's, that's called a pickup. It's actually something that I work into my workflow because it's going to happen. So you might as well take, take it into account. <laughs> Um, review, 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 watch it over and over again, that's what an editor does, some people think it's boring, it's not, it's quite fascinating, and then you re-edit. Right, what do you do at the end of your editing process? Get some feedback, it's just you sitting in front of the computer, it's not good enough, need more brains on it, usually. <laughs> um, you tighten it, you tighten it, tidy it up, make it nice and clean, uh, fix any problems. Now, that means if you've got any pictures that are wonky, any footage that's wonky, you can straighten it quite easily. Um, maybe it's too dark, you can lighten it quite easily. So fix any little problems like that. Um, fix any sound problems. So maybe you've got a really loud banging door that you don't want in there. You can cut that out and cover it up with a little bit of quiet if you want, if you have the time to do that. Um, so that's what fixing problems means. Add your titles. You shouldn't be adding your titles until the edit has finished because you don't know where they're going to go, right? Um, add the music. Now, you could start with the music. Some people like to start with the music. Some people end with the music. It's up to you how it works best. I would say that you shouldn't add music at all unless you've got uh, an extra day or two because it does take... Do you, you heard the music on those two videos, right? They just chose them randomly. <laughs> It takes a long time to choose the right music um, for your video, and you have to find it as well. And in the few, unless you've got money to pay for music, that means finding free music, um, which is a pain in the ass, but it can be done. 
Um, and then you mix your audio. You make sure that every single level of every single clip you're using all sounds right together. You've got if you've got music underneath your voice, your voiceover, the music has to be low enough that it doesn't interfere with the voice, but loud enough so that you can hear it. And then you've got to export uh, your video, which takes a while, <laughs> especially if your computer's not very fast. Um, in Wii Video, it's called publishing, but it's basically taking all the cuts, all the bits you put together and make it into one file. That's what exporting is. Um, Matt will talk you through how you do it. Um, it can get quite technical, exporting. Um, but luckily, we have presets. And that makes everything easy. As long as you know what your footage, and you remember those numbers I gave you, 1920 by 1080, 25p, hopefully you're not going to get it wrong. Um, so that's why I put consider where you're, you've come from and consider where you're going. Where you've come from is your footage. What's it, what is the footage that you have brought in? Maybe it isn't HD. You have to bear that in mind. Um, and where you're going. Where are you going to put your video? Is it going to YouTube? Well, then choose the YouTube preset. Okay. Uh, then we come to distribution, which I always cover really quickly. Um, distribution basically means where are you going to put it and how are you going to use it. I would really advise you to, after you've put in all that effort, make sure that you really use that video. So don't just stick it on YouTube. Find ways to advertise it. Spread the word. I'm really rubbish at distribution. <laughs> Spread the word. Put it on Twitter. Um, find other places to put it. If, 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 if it's the kind of video that people are going to make comments on, make sure you respond unless they're rude comments. <laughs> then ignore them. Um, and think of other ways that you can use it. Maybe you, can share, maybe you could show it during workshop or, you know? Um, so that's what distribution's about. Um, I did want to talk a bit about, about uh, copyright and things like that, because it is something you have to consider the whole way through the process. So I would support, I do try and support Creative Commons. Um, that's making your video open. You can uh, do that on both YouTube and Vimeo. You can give it a Creative Commons license. You can say to other people, does anyone know what Creative Commons is? You've heard about it, right? Yeah, I thought so. It's basically about sharing what you've done and building knowledge. And, you know, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. Why should we um, keep our little knowledge to ourselves, right? Um, the most basic license and the one that we use at, at CADARN is the uh, attribution license, which basically means anyone who uses your stuff, all they have to do is say that you did it. So if any, any photos that I've used, I, I always credit them and always say who did it. Is there an issue... Um, <coughs> If you if you got some members of staff say being filmed and whatever, if you that allows somebody to reuse that film, yeah, is there an issue in that in terms of somebody signed a release form, yeah, but then somebody else comes along and says, oh, I'll, I'll get this lecture and put him in something else. And That's not an issue as long as the person is is aware that that was is what you're going to do. So they sign the release form. And you have you no, have no, rights sorry, to. What I meant was, uh, I've uploaded the film. Yeah. And then somebody else comes along and, and takes it and re reuses it. Yeah. If if they've signed, if the professor who appears in the film yeah. has signed a release form, yeah. um, they should be signing it under the knowledge, uh, with the knowledge that you're going to release it as Creative Commons. Yeah. So in other words, they don't have any rights over it. You have the rights over it. Right. So I've got no comeback it. then. If I if I use a buy, and somebody then chops chops it up and then you know releases it and saying, look at these idiots from this university. Um, you you could probably have some comeback if it was perjury or <laughs> something like that. Um, but if you if as long as they say who it is. Yeah. Um, so so any, anybody can come along and mash up something yeah. and I think, I've got no. I think it's a bit of a grey area because it's saying yeah. whether. It, Lecturers sort of have almost got performance rights. Yeah. But I think JISC have done, they've got like a, JISC have a done license, a lot of stuff. which I think we are starting to look at. Oh, okay. But it's a bit of a, a grey, it's a bit of a tricky area. It is a tricky area. Yeah. It is a tricky area. Um, I mean, I'm not against it, don't get yeah. me wrong. I, you know, it's the right, it, uh, I'm, I'm dead for Creative Commons. Yeah. And, and for me, it's a case of, well, okay, if somebody does that, then ha ha, you know. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, it's more fool then really yeah. well, you know what yeah. i mean i i think that um unfortunately uh just legal is uh, which i've always turned to for advice is closing down yeah. that this is it they they're they're gone now and it's, it's such a shame because they're always um, Jason, who was at Jessica Legal, was always full of really useful advice. I'm not, an, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an expert in copyright at all. And I'm like, oh, Jason, what if we did this? And he'll go, oh, it's okay. I think, I think it'll still be there, but you'll probably have to pay for it. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, that's well, good. It's not there as a free service. <laughs> um, anyway. Yes, right, sorry. We digress. Right. Um, it works two ways. So it works two ways. You can release, you release your stuff creatively, uh, your creative and uh, your knowledge openly. You can also use other um, stuff from other people. So if you want to find photos, footage, music, you can find all of those things online. And I, I use music a lot, Creative Commons music, a lot. And there's some really good stuff out there. Um, the kind of places that I go to for music are CC Mixer, SoundCloud, FMA, Free music, what's it called? Don't even know. Um, all of these places are places you can find Creative Commons materials, but you have to be careful. Each place comes with its caveats, and each place does it slightly differently. Um, so, for instance, I would always be very careful about Wikimedia Commons and the Internet Archive um, because they release a lot of things in pu uh, under the public domain, which means there's no rights attached to it at all, and most of that is kind of dodgy when it comes to using it in the UK. I would always say avoid uh, public domain. I try and avoid public domain, um, if that means anything to you. Vimeo is amazing because not only does it allow you to find Creative Commons footage, but also to download it really easily by pressing the download button. <laughs> Whereas YouTube is really stingy and it doesn't allow you to download, although it does allow you to release things under Creative Commons and you're supposed to edit it within YouTube or something stupid like that. So that's a bit dumb. Um, Creative Commons itself and Google, you can use those two tools to find, to find materials as well. Flickr, I always go to Flickr to look for photos, it's great for free photos. So these are all kind of examples of places you can go to find stuff, but always be careful. I've used um, CC Search before regularly at university yeah. and I would just say be careful when searching because sometimes if you search, click on an image like, oh actually I don't like it, then you go back, it sometimes redoes the search under different parameters yeah. and then it'll bring up a load of images which aren't, aren't actually in the yeah. commons and then you pick one and you're like, oh great, and then you realise yes. you waste so, a load of time. Yeah, everything you use, you do have to look into a little bit and make sure um, and do be careful about everything. Um, so first thing you have to be careful about is that the author really has created that resource him or herself um, and does have the right to release it under Creative Commons. And it is a bit dodge, but hey, who's gonna catch you right? <laughs> it is a bit dodge sometimes, but, um, you know, if it's a photo they've taken themselves, then you can probably use it. The music is usually quite, is quite easy. It's usually, yeah, I know that they've done that. Um, only, I would always say only use uh, materials released under Creative Commons uh, attribution because the other licenses kind of limit you further. You don't, have to, you, don't just say, you don't just have to say this is by someone. You have to share it in the same way or you, you can't, you know, it's not for commercial use. So are universities commercial entities these days? I don't know, you know. So just to keep your life easier, I try and keep it all <coughs> attribution only. Avoid public domain, as I've already mentioned. Um, it's just a bit of a minefield. And be careful of Wikimedia Commons and <coughs> Internet Archive. I found something on there um, recently that was... Uh, I couldn't believe it had been released into the public dom domain. Um, but it, it was created... It was, a, it was a documentary called Blue Planet. Not by the BBC, um, but by the Smith Smithsonian Institute. Um, and because it's a public uh, institution and it's called it's American, I thought, well, it could be released in the public domain because it was made with public money and, you know, that could be the case. But I thought, actually, it's way too good. <laughs> I'm going to get in touch with the Smithsonian and I did. And they said, oh, no, oh, no, it was put on the Internet Archive and, you know, someone else put it on there. Oh, dear. And I said, oh, can I use some? And they said, yes, they gave me permission to use some clips. So that's another thing you can do. You can ask for permission. And if you get it and you keep it in writing, you got it. <laughs> so um, just a, a note, I'm, I'm nearly finished. i am almost kept it in time. Um, using your fine materials. Uh, 
keep your downloaded files in folders named according to where it came from. So if it's from Flickr, keep it in a Flickr folder. Um, and if you're having different licenses, keep them in license folders. You know, it just really helps. It's organisation again. And don't change the name of your file because if so, for some reason it's in your download folder and you want to find it again because you're using it, you just use the name and it's usually you're able to find it again. Um, and if you're really organised, you keep a credit record <laughs> with all the information <laughs> nicely laid out in, a ne in um, uh, an Excel file. <laughs> And when you're doing a video, add the credits at the end of your video. Um, if anyone wants an example, I can share some. This is an example of a photo that I used in a video recently, and that's the credit that I put on, on it. It's um, the name of the photo, the creator. ESO and NASA are really great because they release all their stuff into the public domain. Um, the, I was asked to put the... Uh, the website of the photographer on there as well. This is where I got it from, and this is the license. So that's um, <clears throat> that's that's my my spiel. Any questions? Would you like to watch another video? This is just to say, everything's about the edit. Is it going to play? No. That's a bit of fun for you. <laughs> Completely illegal, but anyway. Uh, this is some further reading, and you can click onto those slides when you um, when I when I share them after the workshop. All right, guys. Cool. That's it. See, yeah. I, see, I prefer that one to Poppy Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was scary, wasn't it, Mary yeah. Poppins? If you look at it in that way. It's really good. Yeah. I love Mary Poppins. <laughs> we grew up on Mary Poppins. All right, coffee break.